Welcome! Today we'll be testing AMD's new frame generation that got recently added to Cyberpunk. And while we're at it, we might as well test all of the new upscaling features that the game has right now. For the testing, I'll be using below minimum requirements hardware to see if these features are actually useful to people that are still gaming on older hardware and are struggling to achieve 60 FPS. Because if your standard FPS without any sort of upscaling is already above 60, it will be a lot more difficult to notice those fake or generated frames. For the comparison, here are the official game requirements. And here are the parts that I will be using to determine if we can play Cyberpunk on a PC that doesn't meet the minimum requirements of this game. Let's begin with the native 1080p resolution on the lowest settings. As we see, we are getting around 30 FPS, which is just about right for a hardware like this. Now while the game might already seem playable like this, in reality there is a really big delay between my commands and how long it takes for the game to register and respond to them. In terms of image quality and the graphics overall, I would say that it's pretty acceptable. Let's see if that stays true with FSR 2.1. I'll be keeping the upscaling settings to balanced because anything higher than that looks pretty awful at 1080p resolution. And if we set it to quality, then it doesn't make big enough of a difference for it to be worth using. Enabling FSR 2.1 gave us additional 10 FPS. Of course any upscaling method will reduce the image quality, but in this case I would say that it's pretty acceptable. In fact, I will even go ahead and say that it is playable. When I switched FSR from 2.1 to 3.0, I expected a tiny bit of FPS boost along with a slightly better image quality, but instead we were greeted with a slightly worse image quality with the same FPS. Now it might be a bit difficult to tell through the video, but when I was looking at the screen with my own eyes, FSR 3.0 made the image more pixelated, while 2.1 looked more natural and was more pleasant to look at. If I had to choose between the two, I would definitely go for FSR 2.1. Now let's enable AMD's new frame generation along with FSR 3.0 on balanced and see what results we get. Right off the bat, we are met with stable 60 FPS. But don't let that fool you, the majority of the frames here are natural and they are doing the most of the legwork to make this frame gen look decent. Which is why it is difficult to tell if there are fake or generated frames in this particular scenario. But if you pay close attention, I think you'll notice that there are indeed some fake frames in the game. Personally, I don't necessarily like the way these generated frames feel, they are honestly giving me a very slight nausea or some sort of unsettling feeling. But what happens if we turn upscaling off and keep the frame generation enabled? This is where everything falls apart. Now I'm not sure how much of it will be visible in the video, but man, this was so bad that I couldn't even play the game for more than a few seconds. Anyway. Intel has been working on their upscaling feature as well, which is called XESS. So why don't we go ahead and see if it's any better than the upscaling features that we've tested so far. In terms of image quality, I would say that XESS 1.3 is like a worse FSR 2.1. The scaled up image itself is pretty alright, but it's slightly bit mushier and blurry than FSR 2.1. The response time is either on par with FSR or slightly better and the FPS is mostly the same. If I had to choose, I would wanna have the response time of XESS and the upscaling quality of FSR 2.1. Overall, I think all of these upscaling features are acceptable and of course native resolution will always look the best, but not everyone owns such a powerful hardware to experience games like Cyberpunk at its native resolution. Many users are forced to play these games with upscaling features, or they could just not play them at all. That's also a choice that a lot of people think is fair to make. As for AMD's frame gen that got recently added to the game, it is so bad that it might as well not exist at all. 
Now if your FPS is already above 60, it is somewhat usable, but why would you even use frame gen if you already have a stable 60 FPS to begin with? And if your FPS is below 60 and you wanna use frame gen to reach that 60 FPS on average, it is completely unplayable because of how bad it feels to look at the game. I know that a lot of people are praising AMD for adding frame gen for free, but if you wanna see it yourself, please try playing with AMD's frame gen on when your original FPS is below 60 and tell me what your experience is like then. On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you again for watching and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.